one of the things that every single photographer and digital artist wants to know how to do is how to change a sky in Photoshop in a really realistic way. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. But first, I'm gonna make some food because I'm actually starving. So yeah, let's make some food and then change some skies in Photoshop. And by the way, setting this camera there was extremely dangerous and I'm kind of afraid that it's gonna fall, so I better take it off right now. So actually changing the sky in Photoshop is not even that hard and I will show you after I finish my delicious lunch. Forgot to put salt in this. Egg does not taste like anything without salt. But yeah, now that's fixed. I will finish my lunch and then we're gonna change the skies. There's actually a lot of different ways to change skies in Photoshop. But I want to start from the simple things and today I'm gonna show you a one simple way to change the sky in Photoshop. So without further ado, let's get into this tutorial and let's learn how to change skies. We've probably all been in this situation when we are out in the field shooting and we are in this beautiful, beautiful place and we might not ever go back to that place again. And then just out of nowhere, these ugly clouds start to roll into the scene. And that is so freaking annoying. And that can be fixed in Photoshop later on. So in those type of situations, you want to consider changing the sky afterwards in Photoshop. But before I show you how to do it, I want to talk a bit about pre-planning your shots in your camera when you are out in the field shooting. And there's only four main things you want to keep in mind when you are taking the shots. And the number one thing you want to keep in mind when you are taking these shots is the time when you take it. Because you can't simply just put a night sky into a day image where there's strong highlights, strong shadows, which don't even happen during the night. And if you're a digital artist, it's more than fine because you're not even trying to achieve realism. But if you are a photographer and you just want to change the sky in a really realistic way, then just trying to combine night skies to a day scene is not a good idea. So that's the number one thing you have to keep in mind. And the second thing you want to keep in mind is that the perspective of the shot matters a lot. Let's say you take your shot like this. Your base shot is taken straight to the horizon level and then your sky is taken straight up like this. You can combine those. The perspective just does not look great. So just keep in mind that you always want to shoot your skies and your foregrounds to the same direction. And it doesn't matter if it changes a bit because that can be fixed in Photoshop. But if you just try to change a sky that is taken straight up to an image that is taken like this, it just doesn't look right because that never even happens in real life either. And the third thing you want to keep in mind is that don't try to change the sky if it actually looks pretty good already. If you're a digital artist, it's a whole another story, but this video is more for photographers who are looking into changing their sky. So just don't even try to change the sky if it's really good. And the number four thing we have to keep in mind is that the skies determine a lot about our photo. It determines how the light is, it determines how the colors are. So afterwards, when you change the sky and if the sky has completely different colors according to the foreground, then you just have to change those afterwards. And I will show in the tutorial how to do those. But now without further ado, let's get into the editing part itself and I will show you how to easily change the sky in Photoshop. So we are finally here in Photoshop and we can start editing and as you can see I've shot this overexposed and this was the situation when we had bad weather there were these ugly clouds it just didn't look great at all so what I did I overexposed the shot a bit so now the editing process gets a lot easier because the texture on the sky is non-existent we have a beautiful white sky that is easy to replace so now let's get into the editing process itself what most people would try to do here first would be to grab the quick selection tool or hit w on your keyboard and they would try to uh, mask it out like this and you can see that it does a pretty nice job but if i zoom in by holding alt you can see that it did not select everything and this is something that works really well when you have a big conscious difference between your sky and the foreground. So first what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit L on my keyboard to bring out the lasso tool here. And with lasso tool, you can just create selection by drawing uh, the outline. So I'm gonna draw here. Remember to take all of those white parts just slightly above the edge here. 
or under the edge, I mean. And then just bring it here to make a selection. So now that we have this selection, we can use the color range. And you can find the color range tool from here if you go to the select and then hit color range. And it brings up the slider here and I will quickly explain what this means. So what color range does, it selects areas of your selection based on what you have there. So if we are going to sample colors, it's going to detect that. Oh, now it detected that almost all for sky is completely white. If I hit shift, it gives us this plus icon. And if I hit again, you can see that it selected more of the sky. I can do it here also. And now you can say that it starts to do a really good job selecting. So it creates a selection based on the colors and you can select from a lot of different colors or you can also do like highlights and highlights does a pretty good job here by selecting the sky. Uh, actually, we can use this highlights lighter too if we want to, it might work a bit better here. So I selected highlights because our sky is so bright and the fuzziness determines how soft and strong the effect is. If I bring it to zero, you can see that it's a really rough uh, selection there. So everything that is white will be selected. So something like that. Try to do it in a way that the foreground is really dark and the sky is almost completely white. And now I can hit OK. And we have to fix some parts. We are not going to touch the trees because now if I zoom in, you can see that it selected all of those white parts also. So instead, what I want to do, I want to grab the quick selection tool and now fix the rest of this selection. So I'm actually hitting Alt on my keyboard to get that minus icon to the brush. And when I click here, you can see that it nicely clips to those edges there. You might have to do some re finding later on, but I think this is just the best way to do it. So now that we have a pretty nice selection overall, you might be thinking that how can you add a layer mask? If I add a layer mask on this now, it's just going to get rid of that. And you can do that. It's completely fine. It's super easy to change. You just hit Control I on your keyboard and that shifts or inverts the selection. So Control I to shift between this. So now you can see that we removed our sky. And layer mask, every single time you have black here on the layer mask, it hides what's beneath there. So now if I would take my brush and I would brush with white, you can, by the way, toggle these colors by hitting X on your keyboard. So now if I brush here, you can see that it just brings it back. If you would do this with a razor, it would be a destructive way of editing and you would not get that back. But yeah, now it's time to bring our sky here and this is our sky. So this is shot in Norway and remember to just keep the perspective thing in mind that I talked about earlier. Uh, this sky fits pretty well here. I'm actually going to bring it under so it actually goes behind that. And now we can just resize it and bring it here. I think it fits pretty well just like that. But now you might notice that we have these weird white lines going on here on our image and we need to get rid of that. And there is a non-destructive way to kind of do it. But what I found is to just do it destructively. So at this point, you want to duplicate your original layer just in case you mess something up. So just keep an original here. And uh, I just don't like to do it the non-destructive way because it doesn't get rid of these white lines as well as this way. Just trust me, I've tested it multiple, multiple different times and I think this is just the best, best tool to get rid of it. So I'm gonna use the burn tool and I'm gonna set my range here to highlight. So you can select from three different settings and what burn tool does, it darkens the parts that you choose. So now that we choose highlights, it just kind of darken all of those white highlights in our image. So I start to brush here and you can see that it nicely gets rid of that. Just be careful that you don't do it anywhere else than the white parts because then it might start to make everything look gray. As you can see here, didn't do 100% perfect job, but we can fix that by changing this burn tool setting. So I'm just gonna burn these white things off. And after that, I'm gonna change my setting to mid-tones. So now that we've done that, I'm just gonna set this to mid-tones. And the exposure, by the way, determines how strong the effect is, of course. So now I'm just gonna burn here and now we can get rid of those gray parts also. So this is a really powerful, powerful way to do it. And that's how I do it every single time. And 
now we're pretty much ready. Remember to not overdo it because at some point it might start to look unrealistic. And uh, the last thing left to do now that we have changed our sky is to actually blend everything together. And this is something that a lot of people lack with. It's pretty hard to do sometimes, but I will show you three really quick ways how to blend this. Uh, so first of all, as you can see, the foreground does not match with the tones of the sky at all. I talked earlier that the sky determines the lighting and it determines also the colors for your image. So what we have to do, we have to kind of add those blues that we have here in our sky to the foreground too. This is pretty easy to do with the color balance tool here. And by the way, if you don't have these adjustments here, you can just come up here to window and just hit adjustments. So now if I hit color balance here and I clip it, if I click this button here, it will clip it. You can also just hit Alt and click here and that will also clip it. And what that means is that it will only affect the layer below it. So it will kind of detect the layer and then make changes to that. So usually what I do, I select midtones from here and I add a bit of blue from the midtones and you can see that now it already matches a lot better. If you want to add some uh, red to the highlights, you can do that too because we have a lot of reds going on here. So just slightly like that. And now if I hit this, you can see that it blends to the scene a lot better. And the next thing you want to think is where the light comes from. Here in our image, it comes from here. So it doesn't make sense that this side of the mountain is so bright. And this is something that you will develop an eye later on. If you do like, let's say like 100 sky changes, you are slowly starting to notice what looks realistic and what does not. So I'm gonna decrease my pro uh, exposure here and I'm just gonna burn that side of the mountain slightly like that so it looks a bit more realistic. And then the final thing left to do is just to create a new layer. You can hit Ctrl Shift N on your keyboard or just to click here. I think it's easier to just click here to create a layer. And uh, we are gonna use these things called blending modes. And in this tutorial, I'm not gonna go in depth. Uh, I'm just gonna explain one of them, which is the overlay. And basically what overlay does is, let me first show what happens if I do without. So if I just brush here, you can see that it brushes the color uh, on top of the image. But if I set this to overlay and I brush on top of the image, it just brightens those pixels instead of brushing on top of them. It kind of like goes into the texture and brightens the pixels and textures on your image. So let's get rid of this now and uh, just decrease our flow. So here, there is a difference between flow and opacity, but that's for a separate video. I'm gonna hit Alt and pick a color from my sky. And the reason why I decrease the flow is that now the effect is a lot more subtle. It's not that strong anymore. So flow determines the kind of the power or the strength of your brush. So now I'm gonna make my brush really soft. You can hold Alt and with your right mouse button, you can kind of scroll to change the brush size. So I'm just gonna uh, sample the color from the sky and brush here. So I'm just brushing the light coming through this part of the image. And as you can see, I'm a kinda uh, adjusting the brush size really quickly here. So this is something that you want to start practicing. But now, just quickly, I brushed a bit there. You can see that the lighting became a lot more realistic already. And then what you want to do, you can create a brightness and contrast layer here, decrease the brightness overall, add some contrast, and then just brush black here because this is actually a layer mask. So when I brush black here, you're gonna notice that the effect comes off from here and now it's visible everywhere else but here. So always remember black hides and white reveals. So that's it. And then what we are going to do, we are gonna add a thing called blending curve on top of all of this. So this just kind of like blends all the tones together better. I click here and here on curves quickly, you have blacks here or shadows here on the left side tones in the middle and highlights here on the right corner. So you can see that we have a really strong peak here on the blacks uh, because we have a lot of blacks in our image. So I'm gonna lift those blacks a bit and then I'm gonna bring this down. I'm gonna create a point to the tones and bring it down a bit and then increase the contrast by sliding this slightly to the left. So now that's everything we did to our image. Uh, let's see the before and after. Actually, now that I group this, it kind of affects the sky too, but it's completely fine. This is before and this is after blending. And that's how you change the sky in Photoshop. It's not that hard, especially if you pre-plan those shots in your camera. And I hope this tutorial helped you a lot.
And here is what I'm dealing with right now. This Canon 5D Mark IV does not fit into this stand because I designed the stand for this GH5. So this GH5 does go like that to the stand, but the Canon 5D Mark IV doesn't. So if you're wondering why the footage was a bit shaky in the video, it's because this, first of all, this table is really bendy and then the monitor kind of shakes. So yeah. I think it's fine. Definitely need to figure a better way to put this on there. I just literally got this camera. Now I dropped it already. It looks fine. But I really hope you understand the process of changing the sky in Photoshop a bit better now. I'm probably gonna edit this video now and I really need to start being more careful with my gear. It sucks to break your cameras. I broke like two in the past couple of months already and it sucks. Don't like it. I'll see you in the next video.